In the previous video we added the ability to save a city to local storage. In this video we're going to retrieve those cities from local storage and display them within the home page of the application. Now to display all the cities that we have within our application we're first going to create a new component here. So let's open our side panel and then within our components we're going to create a new file here and we'll call this component city list.view. And within here, let's generate our view boilerplate. So we'll select V base three setup. And then again, we don't need these style tags. And within this component, we're going to retrieve all the cities that we have within local storage. And then we're going to output a separate component within this component for each city. So for that, we want to create another component here inside of our components folder. So this component is going to be called city card dot view. And for now, again, let's just generate our view boilerplate here. We're going to select VBase 3 setup. And then we also, again, don't need these style tags. So here inside of the city list component, let's begin to retrieve all the cities from local storage. So for this, we're going to start off by creating a new variable here to store all the cities in. And we'll call this saved cities. And let's set this equal to a new ref with the initial value of an empty array. Then to retrieve all the cities, we're going to create a function and we'll call this get cities and we'll set this equal to a new arrow function. And within this function, the first thing that we want to do is ensure that we have cities stored inside of local storage. So we'll reference local storage here and we'll use the method called get item and then we'll reference our saved cities value that we should have stored inside of local storage. Now, if this is true, the first thing that we're going to do inside of this if block here is we're going to reference our variable of save cities and then the value and then we'll set equal to, and then we want to parse this data. So we'll say json.parse, and then we'll reference again the local storage and the get item method, and then we'll specify the saved cities value. Now for each city that we have stored inside of our save cities array here, we're going to make a request to the open weather map API to retrieve the current weather information for that particular city to display inside of the card here on the home page. So below the data, let's create a new variable and we'll call this request and we'll set it equal to an empty array. Now what we're going to do with this variable here is we're going to iterate over our save cities array using a for loop. And for each item or each city that we have inside of that array, we're going to make a request and we're going to push that request here into this array. So we'll reference our save cities variable and we'll specify the value and then we'll use a for each method here to loop over each value that we have inside of this array. Now this accepts a param which will define a city and then also a callback. And within here we want to reference our request array and we want to push a new request onto here. So we'll say request and then use the push method. And what we're going to push on here is going to be a new get request to our open weather map API. So we'll reference Axios and then we'll use a get method and then we want to pass in the URL that we're going to make our request to. Now for this request we're going to be using a different API from open weather and it's called current weather. Now the only difference here is that the endpoint is weather instead of one call. And let's paste in our endpoint here into our get request and I already configured a few things for the param. So for the latitude, we're going to reference our city param, which we define here on the for each loop. And on here we have that chords object that we have the latitude and the same thing for the longitude. And then we have our API key here. And then we're also going to change the units here to Imperial, but I also forgot the L here. So let's add that. So before we continue on with the rest of our function, we need to make sure that all these requests here that we're making have been resolved. And to do this, we're going to use a method called promise.all to wait for all these to resolve before we continue on. So we'll create a new variable and we'll call this weather data. And we're going to set this equal to await. And to use the keyword await here, we have to make our function asynchronous. So we'll set this to async here at the beginning of our function. And then we'll say await and then we'll use promise and then we have a method on here called all and then we can pass in our request array. So this variable of weather data that we created is going to be an array and it's going to contain the data from each request that we made here. So what we want to do is take that data and match it up with the city that it belongs to within our save cities array. So what we're going to do is reference our weather data variable and we're going to use a for each method here. And what we want to do is we're going to pass in the value as a param and we also want to get a hold of the index and then we have our callback. And within here we're going to reference our save cities array and then we'll specify the value. And using this index here we want to get reference to a specific 
item inside of this array. So we're going to say the index here. So for example, the first iteration, the index is going to be zero. So we want to get a hold of the first value of this array. And then we're going to create a new property on here called weather. And then we're going to set equal to the value here, which is our param. And then on here we have the data from that API request. And that's going to do it for the function. So hopefully everything makes sense here that we're doing. And I do know that this last portion here might be a little confusing. So to solidify it, I'll try to break it down once more. So this weather data variable that we have here, which we're using a for each method on is going to be an array. And each item in that array is going to contain the data from this request here that we're pushing on to our variable of request. And what we're doing inside of this for each loop is we want to match up the data from the API to the city that it belongs to within our save cities array. And since the order of this request inside of our request array is going to match the order of our cities inside of our save cities array, we can just use the index here to match these two values up. So hopefully that makes a little bit more sense with what we're doing here. Now the last thing we want to do is just invoke or run this function. So beneath the function itself, we'll just say await and then we'll do get cities. Now back here inside of our home view file, let's import our city list component. So beneath our div with the search, we'll create a new div and we'll apply some classes. So first off, we'll set the display to flex. We'll set the flex direction to a column and we'll also add some spacing to our flex children with a class of gap four. So to properly display our city list component, we need to use the suspense component. And the reason why we need to do that is if we head back over to our city list component, you can see that we define this to be asynchronous with this top level of weight. So let's define a suspense component. And then inside of here, first off, we're going to have our default content, which will be our city list component. And we'll create some fallback content. So we'll create a template. And then on here, we want to define this as our fallback. And for now, we'll just add a paragraph tag in here and we'll say loading. So inside of the city list component, we want to create a city card component for each city that we have inside of the save cities array. So to do this, we'll use a V4 loop. So let's define that. And then we'll add our param and we'll call this city. And then we'll say in, and then we want to define the array, which is going to be save cities. Now for the key, what we're going to do here is we'll define our param of city. And then we want to specify the property of the ID. And within here, we just want to define our city card component. So what this is going to do is create a city card component for each city that we have inside of this array. Now to access the data here inside of this param of city inside of our city card component, we want to create a new prop on this component. So we'll call this city and then we'll set equal to our param of city here. And within this component itself, we want to define our prop in order to use it inside of this component. So we'll do this using the define props macro. And then we want to define our prop of city. And then we want to set a few properties here. So first off, the type is going to be a object. And by default, we'll just set this to be an empty object. And to ensure everything is set up correctly and working properly inside of our template here, we can just output an H1 and then inside of here, we can output the city prop. And then we have a property on here called city. And if we save this, as you can see now inside of our application that is being displayed. So now that we know everything is set up properly, let's begin working on the correct markup for our city card here. So first off, let's get rid of this H1 as we're not going to need it. And then let's apply a few classes here to this div. So first off, we're going to set the display to flex. We'll add some padding on the top and bottom. We'll add some padding on the left and right here, and then we'll change the background color to our weather secondary. We will round the corners with a class of rounded medium. We'll also add a box shadow with a class of shadow medium. And we also want to add the class here of cursor pointer. And within this div, we're going to create an additional div for the city information. So on here, we'll apply a few classes. So we'll say flex. Then we want to set the flex direction to a column. And we also want to give this a class of flex one. And within here, we'll create a heading tag. So we'll do an H2 and we'll add a class of text 3XL. And then what we want to output inside of this heading tag is going to be our prop of city and then the city itself. And below the city, we want to output the state. So again, we'll create another heading tag, this time in H3. And then we'll just output inside of here the city. And then we want to say the state. Now, after this div, we're going to create another div here for the weather information. So we'll apply a few classes to this div. We'll say flex. We'll set the flex direction to a column. And we'll also add a class of gap two for some separation between the flex children. 
And within here, the first thing that we're going to output is going to be the temperature. So for this, we'll create a paragraph tag and apply two classes. We have text 3XL for the font size, and then we're also going to align this to the end with the class of self end. And for the content of this paragraph tag, as we've seen many times before, we're going to be using the math.round method. And then we want to specify our city prop here. And then we have the property we created called weather. And then within here, we have an object called main. And then we have our property of temp. Now within this div, we're also going to display the high and low temperature. So for this, we'll create another div and we'll apply the class of flex. And then also the class of gap2 for some separation between the flex children. And within here, we'll be creating a span tag with the class of text XS. And then for the content, we'll have a H value here, which is going to be abbreviated for high. And then again, we're going to be using the math.round method. And then we'll access our city prop. Then we have the property of weather. And then we have our object of main. And then we have the property of temp max. And beneath this, we'll have a very similar structure, but this time for the low temperature. And it's going to be the same exact thing. But this time, we're going to specify the property of temp min. And that's going to be all the markup we need for our city card component. Now back inside of our city list component, when we click on this component of city card, we want to be redirected to our route of city view. So on this component of city card, we want to listen for a click. And then when we hear that click, we're going to run a function we're going to be creating called go to city view. And we also want to pass in the city. And beneath where we invoke our function of get cities, let's create this function. So we'll say const go to city view and set this equal to a new arrow function. And we also want to accept the param here of city. Now for this, we're also going to need access to the view router. So let's create a new variable here and we'll call this router and we'll set this equal to use router here. And then inside of our function, we just want to reference the router and then we're going to use the method push and then we want to configure a few options. And first off, we want to define the name property here. So the name that we gave this route was city view. Now next we want to define our params here. So we'll define params and then we want to set our state param, which is going to be city and then we'll reference state. And then we also want to set the city param here, which is going to be city dot city. And lastly, we want to set our query string value. So we'll define query here and then we'll set our first query string of lat and we'll set this to city. And then we have the chords object and then we have our lat property and then we have the longitude. So we'll say LNG and then we'll do city dot chords dot LNG. And now here inside of the application, if we click on this card, we should be redirected to our route of city view. So currently within our application, we have a city save. So we're seeing this card component. Now in the event that we don't have any city saved, we have no fallback content to display instead of this card component here. So beneath these card components, we're going to create a paragraph tag and display some fallback content. So we only want to show this paragraph tag if our saved cities array and we'll specify the length here is equal to zero. And for the content of this paragraph tag, we'll just say no locations added to start tracking a location search in the field above. And then inside of local storage, we can remove our array here of save cities. And if we close this out and do a refresh here, we should now see our fallback message.